I'm here to testify for the goodness of the Lord. I want to thank God for the gift of life. He protected us very well, especially in COVID-19. When I was uh, going for my introduction, one of my co-directors in College Intellectual Forum actually was affected with COVID-19. And we found he was driving. We had two cars. For us, we were in my car. So we found that he was not driving faster and uh, it was my nephew Shaban driving me on my car. So we found that he was not driving faster and I told Shaban, I said, what is happening? Our time is up and we had to rush. Why don't you take over the other car? Let me drive this. And Shaban tried to drive the car, I think, around 10 kilometers. After turning like this, I found they were not coming back. So when I went back, I, I found them. Then it is settled. I said, no, let me drive it by myself. Then we drove and went to tell the goodness of the Lord. When we reached, because the SU were not working on that car, the road was full of of dust i had to get mirror water i started washing my face and remember he has been driving the same car and after washing my face we went sat together with him and we came back uh to cut the story short when they were working on the car he was already having the fever the following morning and when he came home he was having that fever of covid 19 and that very day when he called me i prayed for him within three days he was ill completely. So I want to thank God for that preservation. Then number two, towards uh, November, as I was preparing to go for field work, I was not having enough money. And also my brother was doing BCM. He passed. Makere has given him of recent biotechnology. And with him, he wanted to go and do medicine and surgery. So we had no money. So we were running up and down to look for bursary. I look at a certain point and I said, no, let me look at the word of God for the year he said he's going to intervene let's just pray we end a prayer fast for 21 days and declaring the prophetic word of the year in 19 days the boy was called that you come you have been given bursary 50 percent still we are not having that uh, 50 percent which is 3 million because 50 percent has been paid when he reached like this the register said it is for the first time that we are seeing the signature of the chairman all the bursary that was given here it has been his assistant that has been signing so this letter of yours can allow you to register and begin to study. Remember, I had prepared to go for field work. Uh, when I went there, things were not all that very okay because the money was not enough. And I've even made my mind to come back. When I made my first supply, and they, he called me, he told me that I don't have money, but I will pay you tomorrow. I've never seen your, your supply. He said, no, I don't have money. He said, but why don't you go back to the field? I've also been there. I said, but of course, I told you I don't have money said why don't i give you money i'm going to give you money how much money do you need i said i need money like uh 30 million to 50 million i can go back in the field and work they said okay now uh tomorrow check in your account send me your account number i'm going to deposit the money plus the balance you're demanding me that the story short uh the following morning he called me and said you check on your account i've deposited your balance but I'm going to add for you more money. He has given me the 30 million I wanted. Hallelujah. Uh, because I asked for 50 million. And he called me, said, now we are closing the year. What should I do for you? I've not seen your supply. I said, of course, I'm trying to make the loading and what have you. But the money is not enough. I said, go, go right now in your bank. He added for me 20 million. I want to thank God so much for that. Glory be to God.
season Lord Father too much healing thank you master because of your love there's nothing you can keep away from us we give you glory and honor glory and honor glory and honor thank you master thank you there's a word for someone here There's something you have been asking God to do for you. You have been searching for it. You have been looking for it. You will have it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He gave his son for you. There's nothing he, can, he ca cannot give you. There's nothing he cannot give you which he has promised in his word. Father, we want to thank you for this morning. We thank you that the enemies of your people are judged. The enemy of this church is judged. The power of the wicked one is judged. In the name of Jesus, the one who sits on a throne in deep heaven, in charge of running the universe, from galaxies to government, and the Uganda government is one of them, and the governments in Africa and the entire world is, is some of them, and all of them, you are in charge of running them. We want to thank you, Master, that the government of Uganda will do your perfect will. We thank you, Master, up to the LC1 level. Father, we thank you that we are in charge of running the economy. These people shall be blessed in the current economy in the mighty name of Jesus. There's no power that is not subject to you, to this Jesus, sitting on the throne, running the universe. Oh, from galaxies to government. And he has the last word. Oh, I don't know what the wicked one is trying to do against Victory Church, but our God has the last word. The Savior has the last word. I don't know what we are trying to do against these people, but our Savior has the last word. Your word is terminated in the name of Jesus. Father, their promotion has come. Their promotion has come. Let your favor rest upon them. Father, open our hearts to receive your word. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Heal and deliver and bless. We thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Make the word work for you. This is the second part of the message we shared last Sunday. The second part, the word should work for everybody. The word should work for, the, it does not matter what you are doing. Allow the word of God to work for you. 
Praise God. Amen. Because the word of God is powerful. The word of God is powerful. Let's look at Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate there in day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Praise God. Now, Joshua had a big task. He stepped into the shoes of Moses. And you know the shoes of Moses was a very big shoe. He pushed his feet inside it to carry on with the leadership that Moses left into his hand. And you know Moses was a very powerful man of God and a very humble man of God. So God told Joshua that Joshua, you are the one that will make these people receive their portion of the promised land that have promised your forefathers right from Abraham. You are the one that will give each one of them. Each clan, you will give them their portion. Praise God. You are the one to do that. Church, you know, when you are head of your family, whether you are a man or a woman, if you, are on, if you are alone, you are a single mother and you have children, you are the head of that family. And that's why it is very, very important to bring those children to church so that in the church, the, the other, the leadership in the church fill the gap of the father if there's no one feeling it very well. Godly, someone godly. You may have uncles who are in another world. They cannot help you. If you go and consult an uncle who's, uh, who consults the oracles of the witch doctors, what advice will he give you? He'll mess you up. But I mean is leaders help the people they lead to, to get their inheritance. You are in, my job in the church here is to help you take what God has for you. God has something for each one of us. My job is to help you take it, possess it. So Joshua had a big, big job. It was to help these people possess what God had given them. Praise God. So I will possess what God has for me. In the city of Kampala. In Uganda. In the world. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. So, I want to tell you, church, salvation is not a difficult thing. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. It is simple. It is simple when you take the keys that God has given. When you go back to the word, salvation becomes simple. Religion will complete, complicate salvation. Religion complicates it. Religion complicates it. Me, I don't like complicated things. I don't. I don't. In fact, I don't even love theology. I go and do it just... I've done theological studies just for... to help me. Have... or... A good view, a complete picture. You, to have the other side also. Hmm? To know a number of things. To know how uh, uh, Christianity has been handled from the beginning. It is good to know certain things. Know also the mistake of others. Because I remembered when I first went to the Bible college and I came back. My wife did not tell me. But she said she hated my preaching. 
she did not tell me that she, she hated it. Because now I was talking like a theologian. <laughs> not a spirit-filled person who, who, was, who is saturated with the word. <laughs> so when one day the spirit again fired me up, she was so happy and she told me, said, you know, So, I, I mean, you see, because the, theology makes things complicated. So, she was not getting what I was preaching. <laughs> this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. My word. My word. Don't stop speaking my word. Let's be on the same page when we are talking. Let me tell you, the battle is lost there for many believers. It's lost there, that number one point. Because you see, the key here to success is so clear. It's so clear. What is success? Some people even make success complicated when they're defining it. They, they don't even... It is a simple thing. It's a, a, an accomplishment of an aim or a purpose. When you accomplished a purpose, you have succeeded in that area. And each one of you, God has a purpose for you. you the most important thing is to start by finding out what is my purpose. Then you follow it, you pursue it, then you go after it. Because God has laid it in your heart. You must keep seeing that purpose accomplished. What you see is what you will accomplish. Praise God. So the key is so clear, simple. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. Don't stop, stop speaking it. You see, I understood this scripture very well one day. I had a vision about it. And I had gone to one of the, the meetings of one of the, the great men of God that has ever been, that had visited this nation. It was the late uh, Maurice Cer Cerulo, uh, they call uh, the late Papa Maurice Cerulo. So I, I, uh, I went for that meeting, and uh, he was pray. He called the pastors to pray for them and ministers who have been called. And I want to tell you, people ran. You see, it is good to get the anointing. That's, I've seen so many anointed, the poor, great men of God attacked them, but nothing has changed in their lives. But they got the anointing. But what went wrong? They got the anointing. Me, he never touched me because I was very far behind. I only prayed a prayer. I said, God, what did I receive from here? And I went back and I slept at home. And towards morning, I had a very interesting dream. Maurice never touched me. But in the dream, his hand was on my head. And he said, think like Jesus. Speak like Jesus. Walk like Jesus. Three things. And, I, and then in that vision, I saw a lot of miracles happen. I saw myself on a screen. The screen was running, giving scenes when I'm preaching on television and in many uh, areas, different places. But mi mighty miracles were happening. And I woke up. And automatically the spirit led me. He said, that is Joshua 1 verse 8. That is it. And this theme is repeated several times even in the New Testament. So the key is one. Be on the same, because he told me, think like Jesus. Speak like Jesus, walk like Jesus. What you think, you will speak. What you will speak, you will do. What you do becomes daily. Eh? What you do daily becomes your character. And that character determines how you end, your destiny. It's as simple as that. 
People don't know that what we are saying every day and what we are doing every day is the one that will determine where you end. That's why if you want the word to work for you, watch your thoughts, watch your words, watch your actions, your habits. I'm telling you, you can pray like a prayer warrior anointed for prayer. Nothing will change if you don't watch these three areas. Praise God. Nothing will change. We are looking at this so that God who called you, never called you to remain the same. All of you must succeed. I'm telling you, and no excuses. No excuses. No hazy kind of reasoning. You must reason clearly. There are people in the church, they are reasoning like a, a cloudy reasoning. It is confused. The word of God is clear. He says, don't stop speaking my word. It's so clear. And that's what God told me. And that's what the scripture says. When you are discussing a problem with your neighbor, speak what I say in my word as you are dealing with that bad man or bad woman. Don't change and begin to talk like them. Don't. Don't. Speak what I say. Speak what I say. Because God has given us a lot of word. If there's, if there's a nasty situation, why don't you bring that to the word now? People that, many, some people forget the word in the time of conflict and adversity. Some of them say, I will lay down my salvation and box you. No, you cannot do that. You are God's servant. Praise God. You are here representing the kingdom. Wherever God has put you even in your family, you are representing what? The kingdom. In that marriage, you are representing what? The kingdom. So speak what God says. Don't speak your things. If, the, if there's bad business in the city and people say there's bad business you don't want to say there's bad business God will make me have a good business in Jesus name he'll make me have a good business if they're saying there's no money your word is that God will provide praise God when Abraham was going God told him to go and sacrifice Isaac don't you remember? And I'm telling you, they reached when they were nearing Mount Moriah. Isaac asked, I said, Dad, Father, I see that we have the fire, the, the, uh, the firewood is here. We have everything, but where is the sacrifice? Where is the sacrifice? It is, I'm telling you, I don't know what Ab Abraham went through. <laughs> and he was the only son. He was the only son. And God had made promises through the only son, that only son. And Abraham, because of his faith, he had trusted God completely. And was accredited to him as righteousness. He answered, he spoke the word of God. Because God had called him and said, Abraham, leave your people. Leave your father's house. Leave your country. I'll take you to the land. I will show you. And there I will make you great. Praise God. You need to understand that your blessing is in the order of that of Abraham. Greatness is with you. Don't allow people to make you you see yourself as a very small, useless person. Never. Amen. He said, I will make you great. I will bless you and make you a blessing. Look at that. So God said, now. He remembered all that. And then he remembered the covenant he made with God. And he said, God will provide. Praise God. Amen. The Lord will provide. 
the Lord will provide. So when people are saying money is not there, you say the Lord will provide. People speak like the world. They speak the newspaper. They speak what is in the television. And you need to know that those medias, they are there for only bad news. There are so many good news around. They will not report the good one. They pick the bad one. You need to understand that. So when you want good news, you don't go there. You go there just to know what is happening and you pray about it. But you don't go there to be encouraged and to be blessed and to be helped. You will only be discouraged. Because that's what we did when the first lockdown came, when, when COVID came. We said no. And remember we had a fasting. And God said he will prosper us, he will bless us that year. And I said, I said, God, this COVID is not for us. And you can imagine, not even one member of our, our church died of COVID-19. You can imagine. That is good. Not even one. <laughs> a few got it. Just a few. But not even one died. Praise God. Amen. And we want to thank God for that. Because we decided to stick on the word. And it became a very good season for us in Victory Church of Christ. Ministries International. Praise God. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. God told this man, said, if you are to give these people their inheritance, then speak like what, speak what I've spoken in my law, in my word. Use the principle I've revealed in my word. You see, when you go back to the word of God, you gain understanding. Not only that, you gain wisdom. You gain wisdom. You need Jesus to enter heaven. But you need wisdom to flourish on earth. I'm telling you, you need to separate that. Some people say, oh, our priority is heaven. Wrong. If I'm your examiner, I will mark you wrong. If our priority is number one is heaven, why did God put you here on earth? He should have left you in heaven. Because he came, you came out of him. The Bible says, he's the rock from where you are cut. That's what we are told in Isaiah. So your priority is not heaven. Your priority is doing his will on earth. Doing his will on earth. After you have finished your part, you retire in heaven. Because the Bible says each one will stand before the judgment throne to give an account of what he did on earth in the flesh. Did you accomplish your assignment? And that's why he gave them how to pray. After honoring his name, allowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Let your government let your government come on earth here, beginning with my life. Rule in my life. Because government is about rulership. For an accomplishment of agendas that that government has. Even has an agenda on earth. He wants you to rule. Each one of you, you are placed here to manage things for God. To rule for God. What he has created. To excel where he has placed you. So that when people look at you, they look at God. They see him. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The will of God is already being done in heaven. God wants it to be done on earth. God wants his will there. Praise God. Amen. You know, mommy has a, a, a shop and uh, the landlady of that, the shop where she does business from, it's a Muslim lady. It's a Muslim lady. 
and uh, she she came and bought things and when mommy calculated it for that she had given excess money 200 shillings excess then she sent uh, one of the boy who works with her to take back the money said you gave mama you gave me excess money the woman said she has grown old from the time she was young she has grown old no one has returned money to her and said you have returned to me this money from today I respect your salvation now I respect your salvation you are truly saved because this 200 can buy for me one jerry can of water. Can you imagine? What did she do? She allowed the will of God to be done in her business. The will of God was done in her business. I gave someone some business to do for me. And they, are, they were all saved people. The son, the mother was also saved. And when I gave that business, the first week, the man paid me well. Three weeks. Then the third week, four, fourth week, everything changed. The mother spoke to her. I said, now, this is a blessing that has fallen from heaven. You need to take this money. The man began to give excuses. He was no longer giving me the money. And I just had to close that business. But he was saved. He claimed so. It's not just about, you see, let me tell you, it is true he was saved. And I hope he's still saved. But the issue is this. You need the will of God manifest. You must do what the word of God says. Praise God. I like our engineer, Okello. You know, he's the one who helps me with the car. He's a very honest man. And he's not really what, struggling to cheat people. No. He's offering a service. And my prayer is, let the Lord bless him and his team. He's offering a service. It is that service that will make you wealthy. It's a service that will connect you. You see? Some research was done among judges especially when they retire and policemen when they retire and mechanics and other and then nurses and doctors it was a, a research done in nigeria they found that most of them even after getting a lot of money when they were working they end up very poor after retirement and sick and they discovered that it was connected with the corruption and the curses they have gathered when they were working. Because there were even some of them sell away the medicine that should have helped a sick person recover and the person dies. And they earn curses. The policemen also release the ones that have, uh, have an offense. And then they put the wrong people in. And then they extort money from them. Bribes. Let the guilty person go. Judges do the same. They change laws, they, 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 they mess up, they twist things around until the, the, the person who should have gone in goes out. And maybe the innocent one goes in. Praise God. So there's a reward for everything we do. So speak like God speaks, speak the word. But thou shalt meditate there in day and night. Make the word your priority. Each one of you, every day, open your Bible and begin to read it. Read it. Read a portion. Even if it is two verses or three verses. Think about it. Look at your life. What answer does the word of God give you for the challenges or for the steps you want to take? Go for that and meditate upon it. But read the, the, the Bible systematically. When you take the book of John, keep from that chapter number one until you finish. Also, it is good. Or where God has revealed to you, go there. Never stay without looking at the word. Now we have 
uh, you is it you bible you bible is so good it has even audio you know it is easy to listen you put chapter one of john and then you put it on you keep listening again you can repeat it you keep listening again you can repeat it until it enters you because joshua was told here day and night meaning daily daily meditate think about my word you know when it, you think about the word of god what happens you begin to speak it and act it because then it becomes saturated a part of your life you cannot speak the word of god if you don't meditate upon it if you don't think about it all the time you cannot for example now the prophetic word for this year for me i think about it daily even in the evening deliverance service you come we shall look at it still because we are dealing with evil forces that should not joke with you praise god think about it day and night think about that portion that answer your need think about it there keep meditating about it it will change the way you look at the world when you begin to look at the world via the word of god your word changes because god never saved you to keep you the same he saved you to change you that's exactly the same word that romans chapter 12 paul told the church in rome that don't copy the culture of the world around you let me tell you our tribal cultures are very strong i'm telling you the truth our tribal cultures are what because a culture is a way of life they teach you how to speak they teach you how to act they teach you how to fight they teach you how to handle marriage they teach you how to do business but they teach you the, the culture of the world is different from the kingdom culture but other part of the culture is good you retain what is good the one that agrees with the word is okay the one that does not agree with the word is not okay for example respect of elders there are cultures that emphasizes that which is a good part so you keep that one but when you come to an urban place you find a, a, a change in culture they don't respect elders so you don't copy them don't copy the culture the culture around you of the world praise god i've been in uganda here i've been looking at the culture of baganda i'm telling you it's a very strong culture it's a very if you are saved you have to be very very careful pick the good part it's a very strong culture it's very strong and that's why they are able to almost assimilate whoever comes in buganda they are able to swallow them they are able to swallow them even a Munya rwanda who came from rwanda so many years ago is swallowed you have to be very they become baganda it's a very strong very strong culture <laughs> they take the names of baganda even people who came from west nile they are swallowed <laughs> the luru who came and settled in luero there hmm? one day i had one was musoke musoke but but it was, it was <laughs> but, but i had him talking a lure but they were from luero <laughs> So you, you keep the good part, you discard the bad part. Praise God. Our cultures, be very careful. Others are very, part of it are very good, others are not okay. You see? One time I was, uh, uh, I was coming back from Barara and we decided, I, I don't know whether I was with mommy, we decided to buy potatoes on the road and there was a tin of potato and it was heaped up to up here and uh, 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 
I don't know what even made me. Uh, I said, don't re, don't don't, don't throw, turn it, pour it in the car or in the sack. No, remove it one by one. Because <laughs> I want I want to know maybe you have put small ones. And uh, I found that down there they put big one, and uh, that that cut off the space from down. It, the down was empty. But I'm telling you. And it was a small boy who was selling. So, so I said, now, uh, uh, why are you doing this? That it is mommy who did it. <laughs> Praise God. And, and you see, uh, 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 Paul told the church in Rome, he said, oh, be careful of the culture around you. Don't copy them. But let God change you into a new person. God does not want you to remain the same. He, should change, he wants to change you into a new person. He wants to make you brand new. The choir was singing about it. That is love makes me what? Feel brand new. Feel brand new. Not only feel it, experience newness. Praise God. And then if you do that, if you allow him to change you into a new person, by changing the way you think, the way you think, now, what the only thing that will change the way you think is the word of God. Let me tell you. Your life will never change. Mark this church. Underline it. Your life will never change until the way you change you think changes. Money will never come into your pocket until the way you think changes about money. The way you think about money until it changes. My money will never remain in your hand until the way you think changes. That's why I, I want to encourage all of you. People get money. The problem is keeping it. We have a very good circle here. Even if you are going to save 2,000 a week or 5,000 a week, why don't you save it? And you say, God, I've made a decision never to withdraw it until December. And then when I withdraw it, I've decided that I must invest. I must what? Put it into a certain business. Let me tell you, save. For what? For investment. Decide that out of any money, even if it is 10,000, I must save a certain percentage. 2,000, I must save it. That's all. And I'm not going to withdraw it. By the end of the year, you need to know where you are going to put it. To multiply. That's where the multiplication takes place. Praise God. Does not matter how much you earn. Even if it's little, save. Edina, make sure that you save. That is what will bring change. You know when God says, learn from the ant. Can you imagine? Learn from the small insect. Some of you, you have plowed using the ox plow. Sometimes when you plow, you, you come across a colony of ants and you find a sim sim there, millet there, all kind of food stored there. Can you imagine? For rainy season. But they are vested in the time when it was available. So when God says in Proverbs that learn a lesson from the ants, it's not a joke. Let me tell you, it is the small, small things you do that will bring change in your life. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Hmm? Tell your neighbor it's not allowed you for you to, you are not allowed to fail in this church. <laughs> praise God. Amen. You are not allowed tell another neighbor you are not allowed to fail because you are in the kingdom. <laughs> so we use kingdom wisdom. You should not fail in your marriage. You should not fail in business. You should not fail. That's why we have to deal with, the, uh, with, with Musota. Bemba Musota. 
we have to deal. God revealed to me that one of the spirits that keep people, make people fail within Buganda here. And you, you need to understand that Buganda is a very strong part of Uganda. It is that Bemba Musota. Bemba Musota. He was the last spirit king of Buganda before Kinto came. It made me even now go and begin to research about it. Because I had it. God revealed to me in so many visions. I said, but who is this snake I keep seeing in my vision? Until the Lord revealed to me that is Bemba Musota. Can you imagine Justin? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> you are you need to tell me about Bemba Musota. You need to research and know. <laughs> so, so, that kid who came with 13 clans and came and fought Bemba Musota and killed Bemba Musota. And they cut the head of Bemba Musota, they buried it in Budu, where every king of Buganda, that's the shrine from where they go and, 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 and uh, commission him or consecrate him to become a king. Every king must go, must be installed from there. Praise God. So I keep seeing. So now, you see now, the, the, so it's, it's an altar. It's a power. But the spirit, remember even when the physical snake was cut, that, the other, that was the other Bemba. The spirit remains. And the spirit is now working in Buganda. And the name Buganda was the house of Bemba. Where Bemba used to sleep before he was killed was called Buganda. The house of Bemba. And so that day when Bemba was killed, Kintu slept in the house of Bemba. And ruling the people, the clans now, the six clan plus the 13 clan now became Buganda kingdom. Praise God. <laughs> so every area has a, a, a ruling spirit. You can imagine now, I even learned that this Mukasa that we defeated the son is Musoke, that we disputed. Mukasa, that God, that Lubale, the son is Musoke. Can you imagine? And I didn't know that some of the names, the Baganda, the Baganda names their children after some gods. So when they give you Mukasa, the spirit of Mukasa will follow that clan, follow that family. And you will never succeed if you don't appease them. Praise God. So if you are here, it doesn't matter because you are in the house of Buganda. You must deal with it. You know why, what the Indians do? When they come here, they gather even the Baganda gods. They gather the rosary. They go to the lake. They gather all kinds of gods and they put it in their altar. You go to the Indian shop and see. You see all kinds of gods gathered there. We are in Uganda. You, the gods of Uganda, allow us to be blessed. You go to the Indian shop and see. Go to some hotels. You will find the gods, especially the ones uh, 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 that are, are owned by Indians. You will find the gods there. There's a place they keep them. They look like artwork, but they are not artwork. Praise God. Some places we even find water inside in a fountain. You think it is just for decoration. It's not. You enter a restaurant and you find a fish. A, a very nice woman with the tail of a fish. But water is coming out of its mouth. A very beautiful woman with the tail of a fish. They are, they are making their business through that mermaid. Through that oceanic spirit. They are dedicated that business to them. I've seen it in many places I've gone. I went to Nairobi University to pray there and I found uh, one of the halls that was built by the Chinese. They even put their God there. They left their God there. But the people using it don't even know. Praise God. They will always put the dragon. Wherever they have worked, they put the dragon there. If you don't deal with the dragon, they can amper you. But those shall meditate. That is, think about their day and night. The word is a daily thing for you. That thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Now, this is where the challenge is. 
doing that you may do. The purpose of thinking the word, declaring the word, is for you to act it. Live it. And when you do that, it will work for you. Praise God. It will what? Work for you. Tell your neighbor, make the word work for you. Turn to another neighbor and say, make the word work for you. Praise God. That is how you succeed. Look, Joshua was told. I was told the same. If I fail, I'm not going to bl blame God. I'm telling you the truth. Don't blame anybody. Some people like blaming their people. Oh, they blame their father who brought uh, demons uh, and witchcraft at home. No, there's no excuse. Some of them gr uh, blame the grandfather. <laughs> You're already in the kingdom. Don't blame your grandfather. Don't blame your late father. Some people even blame their father. If my father had taken me to school. No. You got saved. His grace got you when you have not gone to school. That grace will change you. You had the te uh, there was a Sunday here. Was it last Sunday where uh, we had the testimony of uh, Balondemu? The other Sunday. Imagine Balondemu. One day, he, he, because he said, when he came here and he admired how I was speaking, and he said, but this, this, my pastor has wisdom. I need that wisdom. So he told God, he said, now, since when they're coming out, he's shaking our hands. Each time I'm shaking his hand, let me receive that wisdom. Can you imagine that? That is how some people said, if I can only touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I will get healed. It is your faith. And he said he did it for a long time. And his life changed. Praise God. Because now, I began to see really, because we were all shocked with mommy. I think even you, uh, uh, Ken, because Ken is a university graduate, but you have seen the writing the, of Balondemu. Does it need beat some of the graduates? Many times. Many times. But he said this, that when he, 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 he first came here, he, he was confused and he did not know anything. And he could not even speak English. Because he stopped in senior three. But in his, in his term, in senior three, he had only spoken English how many times? And because they laughed at him, he tried to speak it two times. When they laughed at him, he never spoke it again. He was back to Lusoga. <laughs> but now he's able to preach in English. And when he writes, the first report he wrote to me, I said, is this balloon the move? Because I've been praying that let some people here catch my writing. And balloon the move decided to take it. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. So let me tell you, church, the thinking will produce the speaking and will cause you to act according to it. And when or act according to it, we are told, Joshua told them, and then, and then, you see, for then those shall make thy way prosperous. If you do that, if you think my word, and speak my word, and act my word, you will begin to prosper. Your way, everything you are doing, you begin to prosper, you begin to flourish. Prosperity is so clear. The steps that will lead you to prosper, to flourish is clear. Let no one confuse you. Very clear. Praise God. And then those shall have good success. Good success. 
What is success? You see? Good success. Real success. Then you will be able to accomplish your aim or your purpose in life. You will be able to accomplish. Success is, you, success is accomplishing your aim. What do you want to do? What God has laid in your heart? What are you pursuing? Your purpose. And of course, we have a lot of things we are doing. All those ways. You are called to succeed. Your success is guaranteed. It is there. If you will really think the word, speak the word, act the word, your prosperity and your success is guaranteed. Praise God. Amen. Tell your neighbor, no more excuses. No Turn to another neighbor and say, no more excuses. No Let me tell you, even if you're two and one of your partner is giving you trouble, you take the way of God. You will come, you will, you will have a breakthrough. Praise God. You will succeed. Amen. You will succeed. No one can stop your success as long as we're in the word. Praise God. Amen. That's the beauty. No one will stop your success. Not even the devil will stop your success. Can the devil fight with the word of God? No. Cannot. So if the devil cannot fight with the word of God, can man fight with the word of God? Because at least with him, he has been with God there for many years. We don't know how, how long before he was thrown down. <laughs> but because love, God loved you so much, that's why the devil hates you. Because even the angels try to look. What, what, they, they want to look at the wonders that God has for Justine. The wonders. So you better be seeing that wonder. They want to see what kind of wonder does God has God package for Florence and Israel. You just look, the, is, they are all is the angels, because that's what the Bible the, that the angels yearn to see from heaven. They yearn to see the wonderful thing that God is doing for the sons of men. Can you imagine? While you hear the devil is deceiving you to see only hell. No. No. You must see the wonders of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Lift your hands and thank God. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. And make some decision. If you have been talking carelessly, living carelessly, doing things carelessly, you have not been giving room to the word, ask God. Ask God to give you that room. Ask God to help you. To help you. Ask God to help you. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you honor. You are wonderful. You are mighty. You are gracious. You are gracious. You are gracious, Lord. You are gracious. You are wonderful. You are mighty. Father, I thank you because the success of your people, they're guaranteed. Their success is guaranteed. Even the ones watching online, their success is guaranteed in Christ. Father, I thank you. May you give us the grace to think your word, to desire your word, think it, speak it, act it, so that we can accomplish what you have put in our hands and in our lives. We thank you, we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. So we are going to give our offerings, our tithes, our seed, our sacrifices. This year, I've told you people that none of you should be a tithe eater or a robber of tithe. 10% of your income belongs to the Lord. Belongs to the Lord. And he says, when you return it, I will open the windows of heaven and bless you. That's already the word. The blessing is promised to you. The blessing empowers you to succeed. Tell your neighbor the blessing empowers you to succeed. Because the first thing God did was to bless man. The blessing brings fruitfulness. The blessing brings multiplication. The blessing gives you the power to replenish. The blessing gives you the power to have dominion in the air, in the sea, and on the land. Dominion, charge. Praise God. 
a seed is a special offering that you give God tied to a certain harvest you need. God, this is my seed for the job interview I'm going for. I need that job. Let, let me have that harvest of a job. You see? The Bible says, whatever man soweth, he reapeth. All our actions and words are seeds. But even financial seeds, tie it to a certain prayer request you have. It's powerful. A sacrifice, a special offering you give God for warfare. You see your dreams have gone awire. There's a trouble in your dream. There's a problem. Put a sacrifice to attack that and, and, and to, to, to reinforce your prayer and attack against that altar. Dreams that don't change suddenly or don't come suddenly. Many times it is because of an, a change in the spirit dream, an attack in the spirit dream. Those who have done that, that's how they have knocked off bad dreams. Because the devil uses dream to plant a seed in your life. If you don't deal with that seed, you kill that seed. You kill that seed by doing what God says. Praise God. An offertory, offerings. Offerings is what God multiplies. He says, whoever shows sparingly, reaps sparingly. Whoever shows much. In fact, the truth is your offering should grow to a point where it is bigger than the tithe. Now that you have known how to prosper, that is what should happen. It should grow until it is bigger than the tithe. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, as your people give their offerings, their seeds, their tithes, and all manner of offerings, bless them, greatly bless them. We give you glory and we give you honor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.